Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Justice League, Aquaman. This is issue number one, Drowned Earth. Whew, this is, I know this is all about, you know, the drowned earth, yet somehow it's fire. It's like the seas turn into fire instead of something else entirely. But dude, man, this is a gorgeous little cover, man. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the Jason Momoa Aquaman. I'm just not, sorry. Um, Amber Heard looks gorgeous though. You know, I, I don't know how good she's going to act in it. We'll see. But uh, I like that we got Orm in the background. You see Ocean Master? That's awesome, man. This is awesome. And Orm is indeed in this. So let's get into who made this comic book so that we can start talking about the comic book. Okay. Um, I'm almost there. Here we, no, 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 that's not it. Okay. Here we, no, 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 that's not it yet either. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Yo, um, what do you call it? DC Comics, they're going to make you work to find who made the comic book, bro. You got to really care. So, Justice League Aquaman Drowned Earth Part 1. James Tinian IV is the writer. Howard Porter is the artist. Hi-Fi is on colors. Tom Napolitano on letters. Howard Porter and Hi-Fi covers. Francis Manipole, variant cover. Andrea Shea, uh, assistant editor. Alex Antone on edit. Why am I reading all the editor stuff, dude? Like I'm actually able to see this stuff and I'm just reading it like crazy. Anyway, Aquaman created by Paul Norris. Oh, man. I love that they're actually giving at least one of the creators of Aquaman. That's nice. That's nice. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. This is, Ooh, man, this comic book. So we start off with a fairly different version of uh, Aquaman's history. Now look, this is a, a soft retcon as opposed to a full-on reboot, <laughs> right? Uh, they're just basically saying that that Aquaman's powers are more than he thinks they are. And that's perfectly fine. Look, uh, go and check out 10 Things About Aquaman, explained in a minute on Comic Book University. It's much longer than a minute, but deal with it. Um, sticking with the original title of the, of the series. Anyway, I explain how Aquaman is actually connected to the blue. I know most of you guys, you've heard of the green. Everybody in, who reads DC Comics eventually comes across the green. Swamp Thing and Poison Ivy and all these different characters, you know, they, they're they in touch with the green, all right? They talk to plants. Well, um, the green is actually a lot more than that. Um, but then there's also the red, where you could talk to animals and, of course, a whole lot more than that. Uh, so you're talking about like Animal Man and you're talking about Man Beast for Man Beast, Man Bat for all intents and purposes, you know, um, uh, oh, for crying out loud, Jinx, that's not her name. Why am I forgetting her name? Vixen. Jeez, what the heck's the matter with me? But then there's also the blue or the clear, you know, maybe James Tinian will show that it's actually two separate things and he's just been combining them. I don't know. Don't care. But the blue or the clear, however you want to call it, however it's called, that's what Aquaman has, and he has the ability to well, speak with ocean life. Well, newsflash, he actually has a whole lot more power than that, but he's never learned how to use it. He's never tapped into that, all right? He, he has uh, also used telepathy for a very long time, uh, but he's able to tap into his powers in this and talk to Mira, but on a much deeper level, like a lot. She's like, he just contacted me, but it's not telepathy, yeah, um, back in the, the Silver Age and the, the Bronze Age of comics, uh, Aquaman used to use, oh, wow, my eyes really messed up today, uh, used to use telepathy all the time. And I'm talking like on par with anything that Johns would do, John Johns would do, uh, Martian Manhunter. So just put that completely out of your mind. He was up there and people knew who he was. That being the case... Um, we're kind of getting a, a revival of that, and it seems like so much more. I'm down. I'm totally down with that. Uh, on top of that, there's a whole bunch of different things, like this Arion guy who was in charge of, or excuse me, he was the first person who actually reached out to these other gods from these other worlds, these other oceanic worlds and whatnot. And uh, it's like, well, how come Aquaman didn't know about this stuff? How come Arthur Curry didn't know about this stuff? Well, it's actually explained in here. And it's a good explanation. It's a solid explanation. I like that. Basically, records were sealed under Orm because he didn't want his brother to know. Orm gets his in this one. And it's it's kind of a messed up. It's, oh, damn. He he went as a hero in many ways. All right? In, in, in many ways. Now, I'm not going to say he died, but I think you know in general what, what happened. If you've been reading the other Drowned Earth stuff, the preludes, I think you know what happens to him. But... Orm kind of goes away, <laughs> okay, um, and it's funny, He's he basically gives his life 
in order to protect Mira, to get Mira the heck out of Dodge. And what he says on the way out, as she's on her way out, tell my brother, and I'm like, wow, that was the perfect message from Orm. Damn, James Tinian gets it, bro. He gets it. You know, like, that's the thing. When you, it's one thing to be able to write a good story. It's another thing to write a good story while knowing all the characters that you're writing. Because you can tell me the best story in the world, but if it's a Superman story and it's the best Superman, it's the best story in the world featuring a Superman that doesn't resemble my Superman, you know, a guy who like swings on a uh, grappling hook through the city and, and terrorizes people with fear. I'm thinking, why didn't you make a Batman story? Because while that's a cool Superman story, it would have made an even better Batman story. Just saying, just saying, unless of course it's a Elseworlds, but that's not the point. It's not the point. I actually did a spotlight on story on that. But um, <laughs> this, this comic book goes deep, real talk. This comic book goes really deep. You see loss, you see sacrifice, you see suffering, you see sexy art, man. Wow. Like with whew. the people who are making this comic book love this comic book. They, they love the characters in here. They, this is, this is a labor of love. That's what this is. And the whole time you're wondering, where's Wonder Woman? I don't want to give too much away, but fulfilling, very fulfilling. Guys, this is Real Talk, man. James Tinney in the fourth, dude. And I, maybe I'm butchering his name and I do apologize if I am because nothing but mad respect, dude. This guy is quickly, quickly, as I've said, I already said it in the, um, what's the other thing that he just did this week? I don't feel like going through all my comic books, but he just did something else this week, which was like, you know, wow. And, um, it was beautiful, beautiful. Not good enough that I remember what it was called apparently. And that actually is starting to bother me now, but Oh, come on, comic books, get up here. The, the pile that I haven't read yet. Oh, no, there goes all my stuff. Oh, just lost a lightsaber. Yeah, um, my comics got piled in with a lightsaber, but not the point. Um, <laughs> anyway, and I complimented him like crazy. Really great work. Really great work. Um, oh, here we go. Justice League Dark and Wonder Woman, The Witching Hour, part five of five. Well, issue one, but five of five. It's really weird the way they did that stuff. But like that right there was a masterful story, incredible storytelling. And then look, we have another one. We have another one. So I'm just saying, this guy, yo, whatever DC is paying him, they need to double it. And then they need to lock him down in a permanent contract and then give him like the, the greatest health insurance, give him health insurance that would make like Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, all the, the Scandinavian lands, make them jealous. You know what I'm saying? Give them like the best of everything. Put them up in a house, all right? A nice, if he's got a nice house, give him a nicer house, okay? A nicer house. Because this dude, this dude is doing some major storytelling. He's doing some world building. He's doing some amazing stuff. And listen to me. Listen to me here when I say this. I imagine pretty soon, this guy, he's going to wind up getting himself one of those gigs where he's doing the next crisis. If not this one, then the one after that. But it might actually be this one. Because if he's not, it shows that DC ain't paying attention. And all of a sudden, you might see uh, James Tinian's name, however you properly pronounce it, in a Marvel comic book. Oh, you heard me. I said it. I went there. DC, treat him right. Treat him right, baby. Because this guy. All right. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done talking. All right. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.